we want to talk about the installation of the rotary glass washer. The units are gravity drained and should be half inch copper, hard piped to and from, with check valves on the hot and cold water lines as close to the machine as possible. Optional flex fill and drain kits are available. The drain should be one and a half inch PVC gravity drained. The main power supply for the rotary glass washer, it's a 208, 230, 60 hertz single phase connection. It comes equipped with an approximately six foot plug. You simply plug it into an outlet. It has the 220 volt style receptacle. The Anima 615 amp receptacle is the proper breaker size for this unit. The rotary glass washer comes with the inch and a half slip drain connection, which is located underneath the wash tank. The corrugated hose also comes with the machine. So simply slip the hose over the drain connection and tighten it with a hose clamp. This rotary unit has a hot and cold water connection. They both are three quarter inch garden hose connections provided with a six foot hose. Note the mixing valve. That's to mix the hot water with the cold water so you can establish 75 degrees in your final rinse. The rotary glass washer does not need a pressure reducing valve. The recommended pressure is between 25 and 95 PSI to the machine. Both the hot and cold water valves have a restrictor, a flow washer, into the valve, so there's no need for a pressure reducing valve unless the water exceeds 95 PSI. The rotary glass washer is equipped with three pickup tubes, which are placed into the chemical container. They're clearly marked rinse aid, detergent, and sanitizer. Detergent's red, rinse aid's blue, and sanitizer's clear. Again, these pickup tubes should be placed into the chemical container sitting next to the machine, on the floor as preferred, or within the cavity of the machine. Once the pickup tubes are placed in the chemical container, you will want to prime each pump. You'll have a detergent prime button and a sanitizer and a rinse aid button. We're going to talk about the cleaning procedure. The power should be cut off before cleaning. First, you want to remove the conveyor shutoff divider. Remove the conveyor guides or guards. They simply lift off. Remove the curtain. It's held in with curtain hooks on the inside. Remove the center conveyor guard. Lift up and out. Remove the conveyor. This conveyor is gear driven, so the gear has tension on it. Simply pull back away from the conveyor, pick up and lift out. Once you have the conveyor out, now you can also remove the screen, which comes out down below. Remove the scrap screen. Now you want to remove the lower and upper spray arms. Simply take the arms and push towards the rear of the machine. It comes out. Now we'll remove the upper rinse arm and upper wash arm. For cleaning the rotary glass washer, when removing the wash and rinse arms, upper and lower, we have these tools that are provided with the rotary glass washer. You have a drill bit that actually cleans the spray tube. You also have a brush. It can also clean the spray tube. You also have a little drill bit, a jet reamer they call it. You can clean each nozzle. This simply cleans each jet out if they get clogged. Cleans any lime deposit, any debris, whatever may be in the jet. The jet reamer should be used both before and after you've brushed and augered it. Now you have everything out of the machine. This is the wash drain back. This is the wash area. Water that lands in this compartment here drains back into the wash tank. Water that lands in this area is your rinse, which flows down to the front and into the overflow, which goes out to the drain. Make sure you clean the bottom really well. To drain the machine at the end of the day, flip the power switch to the off position. Remove the scrap screen. Take it to the sink, back flush it. Remove the overflow tube inside the wash tank. Make sure it's clean around the seat. Clean it very well. Clean the inside of the wash tank. 
Once you've cleaned the inside of the tank, the overflow tube, and the scrap screen, place everything back into the machine. You're done cleaning the wash tank. Once the bottom is cleaned out, we want to reinstall the wash arm. Align the center spray tube in the bracket, pull towards the center of the unit. Then the rinse arm, center spray arm in the hole and pull it towards the center. To install the scrap screen, place in the open slot and slide inward. Now we want to reinstall the conveyor. Center it. Pull back on the gear tension. Make sure to secure it down. Let go and make sure everything's locked in place. Next, replace the center conveyor guard. Lift it over the conveyor, push down. Then the right and left conveyor guards. The left guard is higher than the right guard, which is normal. Now install the curtain, which is held in by curtain hooks in each corner. Last, install the conveyor divider. It simply slips down. Make sure it's working. When reinstalling the wash and rinse arm, if you'll notice the bracket in the rear, make sure the center spray pipe is stuck in the hole of the bracket. Line the manifold up, the O-ring, center part, and pull toward the center of the machine. Now to install the upper rinse pipe, Line the center pipe in the hole of the bracket. Align it with the O-ring manifold and pull towards the center of the unit. In the morning, when you're starting the machine for operation, place a glass against the divider. Go down to the power switch. We're cutting the machine on for the first time. Flip the power switch to the on position. Automatically fills, the detergent pump automatically comes on. It will fill until the float switch is satisfied. The water will shut off and the heat will come on. At that point, you'll wait for the wash temperature to come up to 150 degrees. The wash temperature on the rotary glass washer, as indicated here, is between 130 and 160 degrees. You'll notice our machine is about 155 degrees. Now you're ready to begin washing glasses. Once the machine has heated up to the proper temperature, you've primed all your chemical hoses, you're ready to start washing glasses. Remember, we left the glass on the divider as we were filling the unit. Now we're ready to use the unit, so we cut the power switch down below to the on position. Move the glass on the load side of the divider, or glasses. It takes approximately a minute and a half for a complete revolution. The glasses are now entering the wash section of the glass washer. The glasses have gone through the wash cycle and the rinse cycle and are now exiting the curtain. When the glasses come in contact with the divider plate, it will shut the conveyor off and the whole glass washer. The glasses are now completely clean and sanitized and can be removed. When removing glasses from the divider, the unit will start automatically and ready for more soiled glasses. When placing glasses in the glass washer, make sure to pre-scrap or dump the lemon peels or whatever straws or paper may be in the glass. Simply dump it into the dump tray. Place it in the machine. At the end of the day or at the end of the shift, you're done washing glasses or even during the wash period, you can remove the dump tray and take it to a trash can, empty it out, wash it and place it back into the machine. Once you've emptied the dump tray and cleaned it, reinstall it and you're ready for use again. At the end of the day, we want to get ready to clean the unit. First, remove the dump tray. This is an option. We highly recommend a dump tray. Remove the pickup shelf. Remove the curtains on both ends. Remove the exit end pickup tray. Then remove the front cover. It lifts up and off. It catches behind the wash. Spray hose manifolds with clips. Now we have removed the curtains off the spray hood. We want to remove the spray hood so we can clean the upper spray pipes. Simply take and push in slightly on the front. Pull up. 
pull forward a tad, turn it up on its side. Now you have full access to the upper spray tubes and the inside of the spray hood for cleaning. To clean the spray tubes, to clean the jets, we have a jet reamer. It simply fits inside the holes and cleans the holes. You can see some of these are clogged. We're going to clean them with the jet reamer. These should be cleaned once a day or as necessary. Also, the glass washers come provided with the scraper for your spray tube and the brush. The scraper, you simply remove the caps. This leads down to the upper spray tube. Ensure that all the O-rings are on the caps when you take them off. Take this end of the scraper, shove it down through the pipe, all the way to the very end. Scrape it if necessary. Now this removes any line buildup inside the arm and, of course, remove. This should be done on each spray tube, the upper and lower spray tubes. Also provided is the brush. Stick it into the tube and also clean the spray tubes with these brushes. When you get all four of the upper spray tubes cleaned, replace the cap, assuring the O-ring is on the cap. It simply screws on. Make sure all are tight. Now we want to clean the bottom pan of the glass washer. Go on the right side of the glass washer. You'll notice these brackets for your conveyor. Lift up on the brackets. The one end of the conveyor will lift up, fold up for cleaning. Now you have access to the pan. This is an overflow that can be removed. Clean the overflow. Clean the bottom of the drain pan. Before replacing the overflow, go to the left end of the machine and spray all your debris towards the right hand side of the glass washer. That way you have full access to cleaning all the debris out and cleaning the overflow tube. Replace the overflow tube once you have the bottom cleaned and the overflow cleaned. With the conveyor belt raised up from the right end of the glass washer, this will give you access to cleaning the pan, which is your wash area, and also have access to cleaning your spray tubes with the jet reamer, as you can see. Be sure all your nozzles are completely clear and cleaned. Once the bottom of the glass washer is cleaned, you are ready to lower your conveyor belt. Make sure it's secured and locked in place. We've already cleaned the upper spray tubes. The spray hood is off the machine. We now want to clean the lower spray tubes. Simply remove the cap. Use the scraper, which is fairly sharp. Run the scraper all the way through the very end to all lower spray tubes. Take the brush. Ensure that the O-ring is on the cap. Reinstall the caps. The lower spray arms are clean. Note, we have already cleaned the jets with the jet reamer. Once we have the spray tubes clean, we're ready to reinstall the spray hood. Simply turn it up. Make sure the couplings that join to the hood are in the front. Partially line up the front tubes. Stick the rear of the hood inside the bottom portion of the hood. Line up the hoses and push in on the front. Now it's installed. Assure that these hoses are resting on the tubes. This is very important, otherwise it will leak. These are seated perfectly. When connecting the machine on initial startup, you have a hot and cold water hose that is provided with the machine. It's a three-quarter inch garden hose connection. You have a hot water valve, a cold water valve. Each valve has a flow restrictor inside the valve so there's no need for a pressure reducing valve. Water supply to the unit should be between 25 and 95 PSI. The flow restrictor will restrict the flow accordingly. Cold water should be 75 degrees on the machine during rinse. That's to prevent glasses from cracking. In most cases, the cold water is colder than 75 degrees. 
Therefore, you have to mix hot water with the cold water with the mixing valve, which is located between the hot and cold valve. Simply turn it to regulate the temperature on your final rinse gauge. This is your rinse pressure gauge. The flow restrictor in the valves will control the rinse pressure. The rinse pressure should maintain between 3 and 5 PSI. You never want to exceed 5 PSI. If pressure exceeds 5 PSI, the pressure has a tendency to backfeed into your detergent or rinse aid lines, causing problems with your rinse aid pump. So never exceed 5 PSI on your rinse pressure. Added pressure can also be caused by clogged jets kinked hoses. You should also check the flow restrictor as it may need to be replaced. We're getting ready for the daily operation. Before we operate the glass washer, we need to assure that the overflow tube is in place. Reinstall the scrap screen. Turn the toggle switch to the on position. The tank will automatically fill. The heat will automatically come on. Once it gets full, you will wait for the temperature to reach 150 degrees. The temp ranges between 130 and 160 degrees. Now the machine is heated up, ready for use. We'll open the door. Flip the switch to the on position. Remove the glass from the conveyor start switch. The wash pump will come on. The conveyor will come on and ready for glasses to be loaded. Once the machine has started running, we can now scrap our glasses using the dump tray. It's very important. Place the glasses on the conveyor. The glasses will convey to the wash cycle and the rinse cycle. Once the glasses have gone through the wash cycle and the rinse cycle, they will exit the machine. If no one's at the machine to tend it, the glasses will hit the shutoff arm and shut the unit off. Once the machine has completed its cycle and you're ready to drain the tank down, cut the power switch to the off position. Remove the scrap screen. The overflow tube from the wash tank. Once the wash tank is fully drained, now you're ready to flush the bottom of the wash tank out by using the toggle switch. Push down to flush mode. Hold it. This will flush the bottom of the tank out and any debris that's left in there. Now remove any debris that's in the tank and reinstall the overflow tube and the scrap screen. On the SW400 and 600 and the CG4 and 6, these are the chemical pickup tubes. They're clearly marked blue for rinse aid, white for sanitation, and red for detergent. The pickup tubes are to be placed in the chemical containers and then you're ready for priming. Once the pickup tubes are placed into the chemical containers, you're ready to prime the chemical pumps. On the front of the unit, you'll see three buttons. One is your detergent, it's on top. You'll see it's priming the detergent pump. The second one is your sanitizer, and the third is your rinse aid. Hold these buttons down until the chemical tubes are completely full. Then you will know that the tubes have been primed and are ready for use. At the end of the day, after you've finished washing all your glasses, flip the switch to the off position. You want to drain the wash tank by pulling the scrap screen out, pulling the overflow out, draining the wash tank. Now the wash tank is completely drained. We want to flush the bottom of the wash tank out. Take the toggle switch and flip it to the flush position and hold. This will flush the bottom of the wash tank out, any debris that's left in. To adjust the amount of chemicals that go into the glass washer, we provide an adjustable screw for each pump. We have the detergent, sanitizer, and the rinse aid. Now the small slot is the adjustment screw. Turning the screw clockwise increases the amount of chemical. Counterclockwise decreases the amount. 